AI has tremendous potential uh, across most of the government services that our governments operate today, certainly in Canada. Uh, we see significant potential in uh, healthcare delivery and supporting better decision making uh, from frontline health workers who are overworked in some cases. We see opportunities to uh, identify the more vulnerable in society in a more efficient way and intervene earlier uh, and with greater precision. And certainly as we think about the uh, potential implications of deploying artificial intelligence, we really need to think about how we do that in the most responsible and transparent way possible uh, because trust is really uh, the most valuable thing that government possesses and maintaining that trust as we embark on an AI journey is critical. Clearly, if you look at the historical data that uh, governments have been working with, uh, it has not reflected the diversity that we see in this country today. And so, as governments look to adopt artificial intelligence, they really need to be uh, attuned and self-aware about where the biases may be in the data that might be used to train the models and how the models are constructed and how the models may evolve over time so that we can ultimately say not just at the announcement when we launch this uh, great innovation or, uh, or three days later, but one, two, five years later that ultimately this is in the public interest and this is a really clever and innovative way of leveraging technology to make people's lives better. Clearly in the last few years, what we've observed is the growth of generative AI as a, a safer mechanism to be able to uh, deliver public services, to provide assistance to all of us in doing the administrative tasks that we might do. As we look out into the future, uh, particularly in the public sector globally, some of the biggest applications of artificial intelligence would be in personalized medicine. Obviously that would apply to the countries around the world that have public health care systems. Uh, but supporting education, we see in our classrooms a diversity of, of learning styles and abilities uh, and to be able to adapt to the youth and adults who would be learning lifelong uh, is a huge benefit. And then finally, uh, for those most vulnerable in our society, those people that sometimes can, get, uh, can fall through the cracks, to be able to provide them with an assistant that optimizes their experience in the world as uh, is a really important role for government to play in the, in the future of AI. And certainly, as we look at, at those three examples uh, to start, um, huge potential in the benefit for citizens globally. Certainly, uh, as a firm, global firm like EY, we see a lot. We see a lot of governments around the world, we see a lot of the financial institutions, the energy companies, the consumer companies, and as we look as an organization to transform ourselves in, in AI, we have 400,000 people uh, across the world. Uh, we're looking certainly to, to others for inspiration uh, and for lessons learned, because this is not well-trodden ground, to be honest, uh, as of yet. Uh, that's changing very, very rapidly. Uh, but look uh, to establish some partnerships with those that complement the skills that the government agency would have. Uh, focus on building capacity within government uh, so that uh, government doesn't become susceptible to um, getting sold on the next great idea of which there's uh, many of our government leaders would say that they're getting calls five times a day uh, with some great uh, idea. I think it's really important for government to take ownership of the decisions of how we adopt AI and integrate it and look for partnerships and doing it safely, perhaps more quickly in some areas. Uh, but it's really important that government takes on the uh, and closes the skills gap within its own organization as a critical part of making it sustainable. Particularly in the age of artificial intelligence, when people are trying things at smaller scales, it's often not easy to find what's going on out there. And looking at events uh, like those that the Public Sector Network puts on globally certainly provides a, a forum for people to share their experience, their lessons learned, their successes and their failures. And, and uh, I think as public sector executives, that's very, very valuable in, a, in an environment where, um, uh, where we all are trying to do the best thing. And, 
learning from others is an important part of that, and so bringing people together certainly provides for that opportunity to share experiences and learn.